Welcome back to another episode of Chatting with Ka. I'm your host, Ka, and today I have a special guest here with me today to indulge in some more conversations. I appreciate you for coming on, my boy. You can introduce yourself. What's up? Appreciate you. It's Devon, owner of Miss Cause Clothing. Appreciate you for having me, bro. Of course, of course. I seen your table at uh, Market Friday. I seen on the prom. Yeah. I was like, bro, he got some fire on that table. Appreciate for real. you, man. I'm going to have to tap in. Definitely, definitely, man. It's definitely been a, a journey, an experience going out to Market Fridays. I love it so much because I get to really connect with the customers, the people people that are really like taking in my products and stuff like that so it's nice to know that people are seeing it for what it is okay i peeped i peeped the hoodie you got on it's called miss cause (laughs) miss cause you know i had to uh, i always try to wrap the merch on me so like why you start miss cause clothing brand so miss cause clothing it's a it's a lifestyle empowerment brand it's all about pushing out negativity and moving forward in a positive mindset you know when i was back in high school i went through a, a bad situation bad situation ship i should say Okay. and pretty much it was about toxicity and negativity and I didn't know no better at the time right so it was like my first real one right so I finally learned like yo you're better than this you need to walk away from these bad people these bad situations this negative energy so when I finally had the you know the mental strength and the courage to walk away from the situation she just kept calling me and calling me and calling me basically trying to like pull me back into the negativity you feel me so I finally was like yo this could be something because I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that goes through this everybody not only has the situation shit but like has situations and people in their life, whether it's like a boyfriend, girlfriend, or a parent, right? Or just a friend or family, right? Where they try to bring them back into a negative mindset in a negative space. And it's like, yo, you could capitalize off this. You could really let people know, like, you're not the only one going through this. So miscause pretty much means like when life calls you on negativity, bad vibes, drama, BS, to let it go to voicemail. That's our slogan, right? So to have the mental stability and strength to walk away from those negative situations and people, but not just walk away from those situations, but to run into your purpose, to run into what's really calling you, run into those positive situations. So that's pretty much why I started the brand, to remind people of that. I like that because most people nowadays don't take accountability for their actions. At all. Like, they don't like understand that their actions have consequences and they affect other people. And you going out and promoting that, like, look, you got to understand, like, look, times is going to be rough. It's going to be trials and tribulations. Definitely. But you got to sit here and be like, bro, Life gonna be calling, and, <laughs> like, it, and you gotta fucking answer the phone no matter how bad you feeling that day. So exactly. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I just think that you know it's important to realize there's always gonna be bad people. There's always gonna be people spreading negativity, and like you said, we gotta take accountability for like our situations and what we want to be in life. And it's like you can't be like, oh, they did this or we did this or whatever. It's got to be like, look, I don't want to be part of this no more, so I'm about to bounce. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think people need to know there's nothing wrong with walking away from situations that don't benefit you. I like that. I, don't, I feel like you already answered this question, but I'm going to ask you again. Cause I okay. Don't fuck. <laughs> like, what do you feel like your brand represents? Because I know when people walk by, they're like, oh, just another clothing brand, just another yeah. clothing brand. So, like, what you feel like your brand represents? Like, how do you feel like you stand out? So, when it came to Miss Cause Clothing, right, um, well, one thing I want to say, I was never into fashion, like, growing up. Like, that was never my thing. I, I always you. saw people about it or who was, like, all about it, and they always cared about how they dressed. They, I even saw people who had clothing brands before me. And a clothing brand was never on my mind until I was like, hey, let me do something different. Because I used to do music, and I was like, you know, Miss Calls was actually an album I had dropped. And I was like, I was going to make some merch for the album because I was really trying to do, like, this music thing and support myself as an artist. And I'm like, well, there might be a time where I don't want to do music no more, and I don't want it to be tied together. So let me break it apart, right? So Mm -hmm. I created its own brand, right? So the first question I asked myself was, how do I make this brand stand out? How do I make it different from everything else? And I was like, to be honest with you, when it comes to making a brand different or building like a movement, because it's really what it is, right? It's a movement. It's a vision. When you want people to be tied to your vision, it's not really about the product, right? The product has to be a good product, of course, because you want people to enjoy it. But I decided to make it more about the meaning and the message behind it. So when it comes to making my brand like stand out from everything else, I decided to attach it to something that everybody could experience, right? So a meaning that is kind of universal. That's how I wanted to stand out and kind of make it different. I didn't want everybody to be like, oh, it's just another clothing brand. or Oh, it's just got a cool little catchy name. It's yeah. like, nah, man, this message has meaning. This name has meaning. Miss calls means something. You know, you can name a clothing brand anything. I could have named it voicemail. I could have named it anything, right? But, like, <laughs> I decided to make it something that everybody could relate to. So it's not much about the brand itself, but the message behind it that makes it different. 
Yeah, I feel like the way I promote it is actually like very well. Like you have like little cars that I definitely looked at. I scanned the code and everything. I was like, <laughs> bro, like it's some people out here that really their only way of promoting is like, hey, yo, Shardy, come here, like try out. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I can't, I can't do that shit, bro. Even when they cat call, they try to call me. Yeah, I'm like, bro, oh, I think I even got one of them cars right now. Let's see, <laughs> I put it out on me. Real man about his business, right here, right here. I always keep them on me. You shoot that know. to the camera. Definitely right here. Definitely right here. Definitely mm-hmm. right here. Editor, zoom into that shit. Hold it one more time. Got you, got you, got you. It's something on the back? Yeah, it's just the Instagram, QR code, mm-hmm. website, everything, email. Mm-hmm. Make sure y'all tap in, for real. Definitely. You got any, like, merch on you right now, though? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, this is actually oh, a drop. Shit. We just came out with. Oh, shit. We just came out with this one. Pretty girls love missed calls. You know, everybody was doing, like, the pretty girls theme. So, I tried to do it different with the kind of, like, African-American silhouettes going on. Right. And, you know, we have graphic designers, and I even come up with some of the designs myself. But this was one I was really special about, or I, I cared a lot about, because it was something catered directly to the girls, the fem, um, the women, right. and stuff like that. Because we have a lot of uh, unisex drops. We have a lot of, like, like uh, multi-gender drops and stuff like that. But this one was specifically for the girls. I wanted them to kind of uh, soak into the missed calls vibe. Because, I mean, they be going through it the most, you feel me? So. I wanted them to also have something that's, like, their own. So this came out March 1st. Um, We've been promoting it all February. We did a photo shoot. Uh, My friend Jada, she modeled for it. My friend Ro, he's the photographer for it. So it's just about making connections. And, you know, it started as just a a regular design, and we was able to bring it to life. So I brought it to Market Friday. I did a couple sample drops and a couple sample sales, and it was going crazy. So I decided to really make sure that I capitalized off of it. It's dope. It look dope, man. Look, if you got a hoodie of that, so I'll snatch a hoodie, long sleeve, anything. Like, hey, man, I'm telling you, like, you, it's funny you brought up a hoodie because I guarantee anybody that pops out to market uh, next Market Friday, you might yeah. see one. You, see me? you might see one. Shit. We got a lot of stuff in the vault that most people don't even know about. Like, to be honest with you, this was really just like a, a pre-drop. And uh, it was like a test item, and I just posted it. It was going crazy, and I was like, let me bring this to market. It wasn't even out when I brought it to market. It was just like a couple testers and i'll be doing all kinds of stuff because you know when you in the beginning it's kind of like the the mess around phase you know you see what works you see what don't work you see what people like you see what people don't like so yeah we got a shirt but i guarantee you somebody pops out or y'all pop out to the market next market friday next uh market thursday we're gonna have some hoodies too yeah i feel like you're saying like the way for people to actually like want to make a business type shit because Mm -hmm. people who actually want to do that don't have like the confidence to do it the people behind them to do it Mm -hmm. but i feel like for you like you Man, you about to flourish, bro. <laughs> like you about, bro. The way the way I see it, bro. The hoodie you got on is fire. Appreciate the it. The shirt that you have right there is fire too. Like I can see any woman wearing that and any dude wearing that too. Like your clothes mm-hmm. isn't just for like men. Yeah, it's not directly towards one person or one mm-hmm. second group of people. It's for everybody. Like everybody can relate. Like they've been through like some bad times, relationships, and things mm-hmm. of that nature. So I feel like I rock with that for real. Yeah, I think when it comes to starting a business, like. The number one thing I learned was to identify your target uh, target audience and your market, right? You can't sell to everybody, you know, but you can try to make it as universal as possible. But it's really about niching down. And when I knew I was coming to Clark or just the AUC in general, I knew, like, Clark and Lena is, like, 15 to 1 female to male. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like it would make no sense for me to only cater to men when that's a small, you know, portion sure. of my my. My customer base, because like when you come to college, like people think, oh, it's just classes, oh, it's just books, oh, it's just studying. Like, no, it is what you make of it, right? So, I decided to capitalize off the opportunity, and by that, I have to understand who I'm working with, who I'm with, who's coming to my table. So, you know, I came out one day last semester, and I just did like a test run. I just had a couple shirts with me. It was like twelve. Yeah, had a test run. I was just like, I'm just gonna see what happens, right? And I've always been one for sales, right? But I knew a lot of girls was coming to my table way more than the dudes were not that the dudes weren't rocking with it but it's just the ratio right so right. way more girls was coming so i'm like if more girls are coming let me cater to the girls you feel me like i want to do something that they make that makes them feel like you know they are part of the missed calls message division right so when you say like my stuff is catered towards girls and you know not just men and stuff like that i think it's important to represent everybody in the customer base i want everybody to feel included so i like that i like that so I know from I think I had someone on my uh pa- my past podcast my homie he has his own business he um mm-hmm. he sells shoes clothes things of that nature so I know when you want to come up right mm-hmm. it's definitely tough because when you're doing something that everyone else is doing you kind of like second guess yourself at times you yeah. kind of think like damn like his shit is fire or her shit is fire like but at the end of the day you having that mindset of like damn I could really be better than that mm-hmm. that's something that a lot of people got to respect. Because mm-hmm. mentally, you can see so much shit on ice. It's so many people. So many. So many people making clothes right now. So many people. But for you to keep doing that, that's some real shit. I think it's important to understand, like, 
we live in a time where it's like everything's kind of already been done. Yeah. And I don't really look at it like I got to be the best at what I do. I'm not saying I'm trying to be Nike, but shoot, if I become Nike, why not? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's about not just being the best in what you do, but being the best version of yourself while you do it. So if you look at everybody else, like, for example, if you want to start a restaurant, everybody got a restaurant. You know what I mean? It's like it's easy to look at that and be like, nah, I ain't going to do it because everybody already doing it. Like, you, it's great to be original. Don't get me wrong. If you can find something that's new, original, and catchy, like, do that. Right. But if you find something that, you know, you decide to do and it works – and you see, like, oh, I'm good at this. Or it's like, even if everybody has a clothing brand, it's like, well, he has a clothing brand, but his marketing sucks. Or he has a clothing brand, but his products really ain't that best quality. Or he has a clothing brand, and yeah, it's good, and yeah, his market is good, but his shipping's bad. Everybody's complaining that his shipping takes six months. But me, I may not have the best marketing, but I know my clothes get there in a week. You feel me? Like, you know what I mean? So it's like <laughs> yeah. customer service. Like, you know, so you have to find what your strengths and what your weaknesses are and play to your strengths. And whatever your weaknesses are, yeah, you can make them better. But you can also have people on your team that help you, you know, grow in those areas, right? So I know something I'm good at is customer service. And one thing I saw when I started making my brand was, like, a lot of these brands have bad customer service. They're not communicating with their uh, their customers. Their, their products are taking months to ship. People are ordering. Like, one of my friends had a clothing brand when I was in high school. I ordered a pair of pants from him, and he told me, oh, they're coming, they're coming. Those pants never came. I would have been mad as hell. Yeah, I was mad. It was like fifty dollars. I was like, I really wanted to like. <laughs> Stop I, 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 really, I, really, I really was finna see him about it, but he, he quit the job we was working at together. I never saw him again. I'm like, you know what's you know what's up, but like, yeah. That was one thing I peeped though, because like as a businessman, you got to figure out where people are failing, right, to make your your customer better. So I mean, your um your your business better. So I was like, yo, customer service sucks, right? So it was like. And that's, that's been a problem I've been noticing lately when it comes to business, not even just clothing brands, but businesses in general. It's like, it's yeah. always about the money. No one cares about the customers. And it's like, bro, if you don't care about the customers, they're not going to keep supporting your business. Right. So when everybody comes to my table, I really make sure every single person that stops by my table, whether it's a crowd of people, if it's 20 people, if it's one person, if it's 200 people, every single person that comes to my table or to interact with me about my brand, they took a second out of their day. They're a busy day because you know everybody's busy, right? You take right. a second out your busy day to come hear what I got to talk about, to come hear my vision. So I'm going to make sure you feel like you're a part of it. You're special, right? Like, I really believe that without customers, like, your business isn't going to flourish. So why wouldn't I give you the best version of myself? Like, the same way I give somebody a pitch at the beginning of the day is the same way I give someone a pitch at the ending of the day. I don't care right. how many times I've given it. Each time increases with energy because it's like, look, you've never heard it before. I may have said it 50 million times today, but you need to get the best version of me because not only is it going to draw you to my brand and my product, but you're going to really feel a part of it. That's like the biggest thing when it comes to business. You have to make people feel something. Yeah, because when I walked up to y'all table, uh, it, it really did feel inviting. It was yeah. like you you walked up to me, you said, hey, bro, you want to check this out? And you said it in the most like calm way. You ain't mm -hmm. say like no nigga down here, but hey, yo, check my shit, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, bro, I don't want to check out your shit no more. Yeah. But you came up, you said, bro, you want to check, you want to check this out? I said, yeah, I got you. I looked at it. You had a little car and everything. That showed me you was about business. Because mm -hmm. most dudes out here don't have cars mm -hmm. and most of the time when they do have a car, the skinny QR code is to take your money. Mm -hmm. So when you gave me that, I was like, mm, I like the way his table set up. I like the people that's behind his table. They look very like they bought their business too. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tap in. Yeah. I definitely still do what's happening. Like, <laughs> I know my shit been like nah, active, good, man. man. It's, busy, it's so. cool, man. You know, I understand, but I think it. You know, that was cro uh, cool how you was like, you know, the business car kind of drew you. And I think that's really good because I was doing some research the other day, and it was like, what's better? Because I know everybody has like the little dot card or like the little um, scan your phone thing. And don't get me wrong, I have the little QR code on my phone too, just in case I run out of cards or whatever. But I think the best thing when you said about the business car is like this card is so much more than hey, check out my brand, like. This is a, a conversation starter because mm. anybody can walk by. Like, don't get me wrong. I know when it comes to those market days, some people are just there to window shop. Some people are just walking through. They don't want to stop at every table. Right. So it's like, how can I get that conversion? How can I get people to come from walking by my table to stopping at my table? Because I guarantee you, once I get you, I got you. <laughs> I promise you that. And that's one thing that's always been like a strength for me. I can, I can, once I get you, I got you. Like, so it's, it's been about, I've been in sales since I was 15. Like I started working at a kiosk, you know, back in, you know, at the mall and I had to learn how to get people to stop, you know, you know, you're, when I think there's something truly powerful about making somebody pull out that card and swipe it. Cause it's like, that's your money. We know we work hard for what we got. So for someone to invest in you, that's big. Right. And for someone to even stop and hear what you got to say and entertain you, that's even, you know, that's almost bigger. Cause it's like, yo, you didn't even have to do that. 
So when it comes to these business cards, I, I truly value the physical one over the, the scan one. Because the scan one, someone can walk by, scan it, and keep it pushing, right? right? But sometimes I get the best people, but I'm just saying, hey, do you want to stop by my table? They're like, oh, no, I'm good, I'm good. I'm like, cool, cool. Can I give you my business card? This is just one, you know, give my card. The second they come to my table, they put their hand on my card, I got them. Hey, why you over here? Let me go ahead and just tell you about it. Like, yeah. they already locked in. And then who knows? That next person becomes a customer. You feel me? Like, it's a great way to bring people in. It's a great way to give something back because it's not you're giving me your attention. I'm giving you a piece of my uh, my business, right? So it gives me an opportunity to draw people in, you know, people who would normally walk by. I'm like, I know you're going to leave. Let me just go ahead and give you my card. Why not, right? And they're like, okay, it's just a card. They come through. Why you over here? Let me go ahead and just tell you. And then, or I need them to have to say nothing. I just give them the card. They come over. They'd be like, thank you. Oh, is this you? Is this yeah. your shirt? Is this cool? This is fire. Like, I'm like, cool. Let me, can I tell him tell you about it? And then it's like, I can hit them with the, like, I know you're busy. Let me get 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And they'd be like, come on, you can't spell 30 seconds, even if you're in a rush. And they like, oh, okay, cool. I probably keep them there for five minutes. It don't matter. Like, it's about getting them to the table, right? So when, you know, it's, it's a well, it's a it's a, like an oil machine. Everything works in clockwork. Everything has a purpose. I don't just have anything. When it comes to business people, or I don't just have things in place for the hell of it. Like, everything has a specific purpose. The business cards draw people in. The people you said are around my table. I don't right. bring people that are lazy. I don't bring people that are just there to, you know, do whatever. Everybody, and I thank God for my supporters. Like, those are all my best friends. They always come. They always support me. That's what you really need to make a business thrive is a supporting team. Because right. as much as I care about my business, as much work as I do for my business, I can't do everything by myself, right? I can't talk to somebody, sell a shirt, bag a shirt, record this, do this, do that, entertain everybody all by myself, Right. So I have friends that see that vision with me. So when you were like, okay, people look inviting, they look cool. That's because they believe in the vision. No one's going to work hard for a vision they don't believe in. No one's going to follow a leader they don't believe in, right? So for it's sure. my job to make sure that the people around my table not only believe in the vision, but believe in me. And they see the growth. They see the progress. So it means a lot to know that people look at my friends. And I don't like consider them my workers, but they're my friends. You know, they come, they help me, they support me. And they do a lot for me, and it, it really means the most, and it means the world. Because, like you said, you you may not see me, but you see a friendly face, and you come up, right? So it's like, even though they didn't really have to do anything, just their presence brought business. And it's like, I have to appreciate that. I have to acknowledge that because I couldn't do everything by myself. Mm -hmm. I'm one man. I can't talk to a hundred people at one table all at once and give them the same emotion. But I can talk to a group here. My friend can entertain a group here. I can do something here. And hey, I'm about to record this. Can you bag the shirt? Like. It's a it's a it's like a machine. So, you know, it means a lot to know that the people around me are contributing to my success and contributing. So I think it's important to realize that if you're trying to be successful in business, you have to have you're only as successful as the people around you. Right. So if you around people that are dragging you down, that are talking negatively or who are sabotaging you, walk away from that situation. Miss calls like, you know, what I mean, like I said, it's not just about leaving negative situations, but running into positive ones and positive people. So you got to bring those people to you and that business will thrive. That's real because you are who you hang around, bro. You hang around people that, like you said, want to help you succeed in life. They're going to help you succeed. You're going to flourish. Mm -hmm. You mess with people that, like, don't be about their business or they just doing shit just because, like, you're going to go down with them, bro. And that's that's just the real. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing with the car, for sure, I can definitely say, like, look, when you give someone that car and they go back home at the end of the day, they got one or two options. They're going to look at it and they're going to throw it away. Mm -hmm. Or they're going to look at it and they actually going to indulge and be like, oh, shit. This shit actually tight fire. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the power, like you said, of that car, for real. Power. Because, look, when I looked at it, I was like, most other niggas, I would throw this shit away. Mm -hmm. But I already knew you before. Yeah. I already knew you before. So it's like, that ain't really fuck with my, like, idea of wanting to tap in. But I was already looking at your shit like, bro, this shit tough. Mm -hmm. Like, I really cop this shit. And when you was like, you knew me uh, before, I think people need to understand that your business isn't just your your business. Your business is your integrity. It's you, and your it's personality your is you, right? So if I'm running a business, but I'm going around screwing people over, doing this, doing that, you know, just a mess, right? People are going to be like, why would I support you? You know what I mean? You just did me dirty the other week, or you just did this, you just did this. Your business is only as strong as your character. Brand is everything, right? So if you come to people in a good behavior, out in whether I'm selling or not, I keep it 100 with everybody. Right. You feel me? Don't get me wrong. I'm not perfect. I make my mistakes. There's people that probably don't like me. There's some people I don't like, right? You know, well, you're yeah, not going so cool. to like everybody, right? And everybody's not your friend. But a majority of people can't say I'm a bad person. 
You know what I mean? I'm not maybe a, a, a saint, but, you know, people can't say I, I'm, I'm doing this or I'm doing that or I'm this, I'm that, right? Because I make sure that my character aligns with my business values. I can't tell people to leave negative situations and to run into positivity if I'm a negative person, right? I try my best to be the best version of myself every day. You know what I mean? I, I pray. I do everything I need, uh, I need to do to make sure God speaks through me to other people, right? So I try to make sure I live in that purpose with God so that it reflects on my business and my character reflects on my products. I want people to know, like, hey, you, I can, you can trust me. And while that happens outside of business, that also happens within business, right? I make sure that I'm very clear. I'm very communicative with my customers, I want people to realize that I do good business. I don't try to upsell or or um by upsell. I don't try to like overcharge people. I don't be like, yo, yeah, I hate that. Yeah, shit. yeah it's like, 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 why are you trying to tag? You you rock with this shirt, so it's cool. Fifty, sixty. It's like, come on, man. Like, I'm a college student, just like you. Exactly. Right? I'm trying to like, I'll exactly. tap in with you, but like, bro, make the prices more. Yeah, like, make affordable. it reasonable. Like some people be trying to overcharge, and what, what the reason why they do it is beyond me. It could be trying to get money. It could be because the product costs a lot. It's whatever, right? But I know me, and it's like you don't get up by getting over. You feel me? You can't get up by getting over on people and your success will only reflect on the work you do. So if you do things dirty, your success will be dirty. And if I'm going to go up, I want to go up the clean way. So right. it's about having good ethics and, you know, good morals, you know, in business and just personally. I like that. I like that. So you ever like, I know you personally, you've been through like the ups and downs of, you know, trying to start the business, right? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about like the background when it comes to like, okay, um, a shipment hasn't went through or uh -huh. like, um, you're trying to get a, like a hoodie or a shirt mm -hmm. made. And then it's just like, the timing is off. Like you, like, cause I know as a real person, you're going to let your customers know, like, look, this shirt isn't being done at this time. And you ain't going to be like mm -hmm. your homie and fuck people mm -hmm. over and yeah. be like, look, I can't give it to you right now. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Like mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about the behind the scenes. Cause people don't never see that. They just see what's on the table. Yeah. So when it comes to customer service, that's, that's essentially what it is. Right. And uh, being a business owner, you're responsible for everything. So the success of the business, you know, depends on what you do. And success is nothing without planning. Right. You have to plan. You have to plan. And I'm still struggling with this to this day. But some of my most successful months, years or whatever have been because I have planned it. You can't plan. Like, people be like, oh, he's talented. Oh, he's this. He's that. Talent is nothing compared to preparation. If you prepare and opportunity meets it, you have to be ready. So when you're like, oh, a hoodie's not being made. So when it comes to the online sales, I do drop shipping. So how it works is hoodies are made when the order is made. So when somebody makes an order on our website, there had, there's a warehouse that, you know, up in North Carolina, and there's a warehouse we use, right? So when someone makes a, a purchase on the website, the order gets sent directly to the warehouse, and the warehouse is like, all right, cool. They make it straight away. So our projects come no more than 10 days, maybe a week, maybe like 10, 7 to 10 days, right? That's valid. So that's how I know my products come on time, right? Because I know I'm a college student too. I'm doing a lot. So it's like, why would I try to – put a full-time job with a full-time academic career and then have my customers mad at me because I can't get, you know, ship out their products on time. Cause that's a lot of work doing it all by yourself, trying to order the products, ship the products, make sure it reaches the customer make sure they get this. And then the third. So it was like, no, uh, every time someone orders something, it goes directly to the warehouse and the warehouse ships it straight to them. The second is finished. There is no delay. Like they do that for a living. Right. So I know my customers are going to get my products like that. When it comes to point of sale, like market Friday, um, when it comes to inventory, there have been times where I couldn't participate in markets because I was low on inventory. Right. And that was like, and I had to learn about that because it's like, you can't make money if you ain't got no stock. And when you're not making sales, you're spending the money you made from your previous market days. Like, you can't really come up like that. Every time you sell out, you're not really doing the most. So I have to plan the days that I order stuff. I have to plan the days. like, Okay, cool. I know this, um, a pack of 20 items is going to take two weeks to ship. And if I need it in 14 days, I need to order it two weeks ahead to make sure it gets here on time. I actually just had a situation this week where I ordered a um, a package of, you know, items to sell at market. And I was it was supposed to be Friday, but it was raining. Right. But I was supposed to get a package of stuff to come in, like more inventory and more stock to sell. Right. Mm -hmm. I put the zip code on wrong. Everything else was right. I was off by like two numbers. Right. Delayed the package three days. Right. So it almost messed up everything because of two little numbers, right? So you got to plan things ahead of time so that it can come here. And it, thank God it came in time. But if it had, it came like a day before when it really should have been there that Monday, it came that Thursday and I needed it Friday, right? You never want to cut things that close to the wire. So I'm still learning when to plan stuff out, when to order stuff. I'm like, look, you know, you're going to do market at the end of March. 
Order the stuff now so you ain't waiting to the last minute. Right. Order the bags now so you ain't waiting to the last minute. Order the business cards now so you're not waiting to the last minute and stressing out because how can I give you a good customer service? I'm stressing, you feel me? So I want to make sure that everybody understands the importance of preparation. you got to plan out the days you need to buy stock. You need to plan out how much you're going to sell because, you know, if everybody knows if there's a if they have a good product or not. You know how much you're going to sell because right. it's about you, right? So yeah. if you want to go out there and sell one shirt, okay, cool. If you want to go out there and I know I can – Probably sell 20 in a day, right? So it's like, all right, cool. So I need to make sure I have stock that reflects that. So it's just about planning. It's just about preparation. It's just about making sure that things run smoothly. Of course, mistakes happen. Things happen. And you have to just adjust. You can't just sit there and be like, dang, I can't get the shipment. Like, no, bro. Like, lock in. You're a business owner. You got to buckle down and lock up, you know, get it together. So just planning out things, planning out when the shipment needs to come out. And everything's going to run smoothly if you just prepare. I don't think we understand, like, how blessed we is to be mm-hmm. at HBCU when it comes to, like, businesses and stuff like that. Because we have we have the opportunities, like, Market Friday at Spellman. We have opportunities, like, the Promenade at Clark or um, Hump Wednesday at Morehouse. Like, we have three opportunities to sell clothes mm-hmm. and businesses mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Now, for people that send, like, PWIs mm-hmm. and stuff like that, they don't really have that opportunity to be like, okay, like, I have three schools or I'm four. And, cl- mm-hmm. and we have a whole state of GSU, yeah. and all the schools we could go to. So for people who actually do have businesses and they don't have like the credibility or the amount of schools that we have to promote and produce, what do you feel like you would tell them? Um, I think we work as hard as we want to. Right. So, yes, some people have more access and opportunities than others. But I was blessed because when I came to Clark, I didn't even know we had market days. I didn't know we had market Thursday, Wednesday and Friday. Right. I was like, oh. I'm thinking I'm finna just sell out the dorms. You feel me? I'm like, oh, there's a whole designated spot for this. Let Mm -hmm. me do that. So. Um, that was definitely a blessing. I would say to people, like, there's always an opportunity to vend. You can just look up clothing, um, vending state, like Atlantic Station. They need vendors, you know, people to sell stuff. There's all kinds of people throwing uh, streetwear conventions that need vendors. You know what I mean? Like, if you're trying to do clothing, look up places that accept vendors for clothing, whether it's at a yard sale, at the local park. You know what I mean? Like, there's always an opportunity to get your product out there. Even if it's standing in front of a strip mall with a table and just selling who walks into the Walmart, like it's all about what you do and what you put forward. People want to be like, Oh, I don't have the opportunity or, Oh, it's too hard or "Oh, it's too far. You're never going to get nowhere with that mindset. You got to make it happen. Like I don't like having to walk to Spellman every time I want to sell item. Like I live all the way like over in Beckwith. Like that's a, over a mile walk, right? <laughs> yeah. But I do what I got to do. I got. I, I bought me a wagon so I can pull my stuff behind me. Like, it doesn't, you know what I mean? You got to do what you got to do. You can't really make excuses. I'm, I'm big on accountability, and I'm big on we do what we want, and we reap w- what we give out, right? So if you really want to get your name out there and get your product out there, order some shirts, order some hair product, order whatever, even order some business cards. You can just stand outside somewhere and be like, hey, I don't have any products with me, but this is my website. Boom, here you go, here you go, here you go. Somebody's going to look into it, you feel me? And then, right. you know, you put yourself in positions where you can sell, right? Maybe you go to a PWI. Maybe they do have a day you can sell. Maybe they have somewhere that's public property where you can set up a table, even if it's not like an organized day, you can just be out there and put your product out there. Like, there's always an opportunity, Right. And I think that was, um, I think it's important to realize, like, when I came to Clark, right, like, I was kind of concerned, not because of where I was going. Of course, I loved Clark. You know, my dad went there. That's one thing that's big to me. Mm -hmm. And I love the HBCU experience. I always want to go to HBCU. But when when it comes to the HBCU, one thing that I was kind of discouraged with was, like, many people don't know about us. You know what I mean? Like, you know how many people I've said, oh, where you go to school? I go to Clark. Where's that? Where's that? Where's Clark Atlanta? Like, maybe they know Morehouse and Spellman, but it's like, come on. Man. Yeah, because, like, Morehouse and Spellman, they're, like, mm-hmm. the people that take all the credit for the shit we do. Exactly. Like, we do most of the stuff in the AUC, and they give them the credit for bro, what they do because they got the name. Bro, we are the AUC. Like, we literally put the U in the AUC. Like, realistically, what? Realistically. So, it's, like, people who, you know, and, and I've thought about that, and it's, like, dang, I could have went to, like, you know what I mean, Georgia Tech or Georgia State, or UGA, or, you know, some other PWI, where it is more known, or whatever, but being more known doesn't necessarily mean more opportunity. I've never had more opportunities, and I can imagine myself having more opportunities at any other school than Clark Atlanta. Even at Morehouse, I feel like I wouldn't get the same opportunities I get at Clark Atlanta, because our business school is exceptional. Even if no one knows about it, it's still exceptional. Like, right, Pinky Cole, she came out of the, she didn't come out of the business school, but she came out of Clark, and look at her now, she has a hundred million dollar business. I just finished reading her book last night. Like it's about entrepreneurial tactics and stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. 
where you go doesn't determine your success, right? Now, if you want to go to a PWI, if you want to go to like Harvard, if you want to go to a well-known school, that's cool. Do you. Don't get me wrong. But you can go to a, a school in the boonies and still have an exceptional opportunity is what you make of it, right? So I've been blessed that Clark had so many opportunities. The Market Days, Spellman, Market Fridays, uh, Hump Wednesdays at Morehouse, the business classes. They brought so many entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs here for can uh, what you call it, panels and stuff like that. I just sit in and listen. I take notes. You know what I mean? They brought B. Simone. They brought uh, Ray Daniels. Like so many people in the entertainment industry, so many people in the fashion industry to come give that knowledge, right? So it's like I can't imagine myself being anywhere but uh, Clark Atlanta. It's like I see it as if somebody doesn't know about Clark Atlanta, I'm going to be so exceptional that they're going to be like, where did he go to school? And everyone's going to know about Clark Atlanta. You feel me? Like yeah. instead of going to a place that's already up, make the place you are up. You feel me? Instead of going to a new environment, make the environment you're already in better so that everyone knows about it. So when people are like, oh, I go here and we don't really have opportunities and stuff like that, I guarantee you there's somewhere in your community where you can get your business going. Because people come out of all kinds of places making it. So it's like there's always something you can do. Now, we you know have the luxury of living in a major city. Atlanta. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a major yeah. city. But, shoot, if you live in Wyoming, I guarantee you there's somewhere you can sell. You know what I mean? Some Something you can do. There's nothing wrong with setting up a table, you know, and selling lemonade in the neighborhood. Like, I used to go around and rake leaves. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, mow the lawn. Yeah, mow the lawn. Like, there's something you can do. And some people started raking leaves and their neighborhood and now they have a landscaping business like it's it's so easy out here and to be honest with you social media is so big you can do that anywhere you don't even have to go anywhere and set up if you just market right you can get everything online so there's really no excuse to be honest yeah. with you of how far you can go no matter where you are uh but look my boy i appreciate your words of wisdom for real thank like, you, you, bro. you bro like i can honestly say like inviting you on you like probably told them so much shit that they probably would have known mm -hmm. people who actually have businesses behind the scene like stuff that they actually need to know for real for real mm -hmm. but one thing that they really need to know is what miss cause clothing got coming up like, what's <laughs> going on? like man so one thing that's really popping is i'm trying to get more into the fashion scene so there's i know that we have a lot of fashion shows coming up um the ASA, um, the African Student Association at Georgia State, they got a fashion show coming up for African-American creators. I think any clothing brand, I don't think it's just blacks, but any clothing brand creators and stuff like that. So I'm going to be participating in the Georgia State fashion show coming up sometime in April. I think it's like late April, maybe April 17th. I think that's like a, a guesstimate date, but it's coming up in late April. So we participate in the Georgia State fashion show. I've been getting a lot of stuff ready for that. Uh, we got stuff coming up for the homecoming fashion show. And we're going to have some summer drops that we're trying to get ready because we know it's going to get hot. We know it's going to get, you know, everybody's trying to, you know, do something cool, hit the pool, stuff like that. So I'm trying to come up with products and stuff that will really, like, captivate that and things like that. But I'm getting ready for just all the fashion shows this year because I really want to showcase your uh, my products as much as I can. Um, this right here, this kind of pretty girl shirt, this is kind of like a spring break drop. It's something you can take to the beach with you. It's something you can just wear. You know, like, the reason I had it white was because it's about to get hotter, right? So you want something that's breathable in. I try to make sure the fabric is good for the girls and stuff like that. It's like soft style fabric. But and then we're also preparing for the homecoming fashion shows that are going to be later this fall. You know, one at Morehouse and one at Clark. So it's perfect. man. Hey, look, that's going to conclude today's episode of Chatting with Kyle. I want y'all to make sure y'all tap in for real, though, because y'all seen me wearing this shit one of the episodes. <laughs> y'all going to be like, what the fuck that shit come from? You know where it came from. You know where it came from now. So I appreciate you for coming out, my boy. Man, I appreciate you too, bro. Of course. Y'all be blessed. Y'all stay safe. Peace.